Let's draw a cool building in Procreate, then take it to Photoshop for the coloring. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. I'm starting today's drawing in Procreate on iPad Pro. The reason for that, quite simply, is because I love to sketch on iPad. Recently, I've been taking my iPad everywhere and I've used it for doodling in the train, at work, in bed, everywhere. It's a really cool thing to have a portable tablet, and I feel like I'm finally starting to get the hang of it. Before, I used to have trouble controlling my hand gestures on the slick surface of the iPad screen. If you've ever drawn on glass, you know it's not easy and there are a lot of unwanted wiggles. To remedy that, I bought a paper-like screen protection. Now, this isn't sponsored in any way, I'm just telling you the fact. Paper-like is a screen protector that you install, it's a transparent piece of plastic that gives your screen the feel of paper. It's not exactly the feel of paper, but I still find it very close. I started drawing years ago on paper, long before I got my first tablet, and I'm still very fond of the texture of paper, much more than a screen. The slightly rough texture is much better than the slick screen. Also, as an added bonus, Paperlike makes your iPad screen matte instead of shiny, which is better against reflections when you're watching videos and there's a light behind you. So yeah, Paperlike is good. For about 40 bucks, you get two screen protections. I've had mine for over a month and so far it's still good as new, even after hours and hours of drawing and actively using it. All of that to say that the iPad is now my tool of choice for doodling and sketching. Actually, it depends on the style of digital drawing I'm going for. But for this you're watching, it makes sense. In Procreate, you can easily toggle the perspective grid on and off. You just go to the settings, tap Drawing Guide, and in the Edit menu you can choose all kinds of grids, like isometric hexagons, squares, or perspective points. You then place the perspective points, and you go on about your sketching. Another great point for Procreate is the peppermint brush that I'll be soon using to ink the sketch. It feels good, the strokes look like pencil with a blunt tip. It's not as sharp as a mechanical pencil, it's more realistic and organic in a way. What is funny though, and I only realized now that I'm looking at the entire process, is that I sketched this using an inking brush and I inked it using a sketching brush. My sketch is in full black lines and no opacity variation, whereas the inking layer looks like pencil. It's just because I like the look of blunt pencil lines. It felt less aggressive than black lines for the idea I had of the finished picture. Anyway, these are the tools I used to sketch. Once I'm done with it, after about 2 hours I think, I will export the canvas in a PSD file to use in Photoshop on PC. Now that you know how I drew it, I believe it's time for me to tell you what it is, what I drew. I present to you what I've come to fondly call the Academy. This building, to me, is where the scholar of a small late medieval era town lives and works. Think of fantasy, like the name of the wind, or Aragon, or something. This kind of setting, where the universe is fantasy, but not high fantasy with orcs and elves and stuff. The kind of setting where magic, philosophy and science are virtually indistinguishable. The academy lies on the outskirts of a small town, and the old guy who lives in there is probably called the Grandmaster or something by the town folks. If you enter the academy building, you will see a ton of pots with weird plants, strangely colored liquids, and powders of all kinds. There are rooms full of alambics, others full of books and scrolls of all kinds in obscure and long dead runic characters. And there is the observatory at the top of the central tower, where the Grandmaster goes to observe the night sky and make star charts. This would basically be the setting for the first quarter of a fantasy book for teenagers. The hero, an orphan with natural talent for magic and stuff, has been taken into apprenticeship by the Grandmaster and is now learning the craft. That is, of course, until one day when he's researching plants in the woods, he goes back to the academy he now calls his home, only to find the building half destroyed and his master dead. Then begins his hero's journey. But that's not what we're going to do today, we're just drawing the building. Drawing and storytelling are really close though, and telling yourself the story of what you're drawing helps making it make sense, and add details if needed. For example, there needs to be a reason as to why the building is strangely shaped with the tower in the middle. It's an observatory, and so there are telescopes. This sort of stuff. Back to the technical aspect of drawing this. I talked about the perspective grid. I talked about the various elements of designs. Oh yeah, 
So for my quote unquote inking, I felt like one pass of the pencil brush wasn't enough in most places, so I emphasized the big shapes by going over them a second time. That's the outside edges, the roof, etc. The spiral pattern on the door, for example, isn't something I will go over twice. Fun fact, as I export this to Photoshop on my PC, I first started the coloring and then I realized I had forgotten to draw the door patterns, so I had to do that and re-export the file. Instead of matching the two Photoshop documents, I decided to start the coloring anew, so you won't see me pick the colors and tweak them before filling in the flats. Talking about choosing colors, again, you won't see me do it, but the very basic idea was to find a rather warm color palette. The walls are cream colored, the roofs are a very saturated red, the wooden doors are your basic wood brown, and the golden spirals, now, they are gold colored, obviously. That leaves us with the stone walls and the glass for the windows. That's where some contrast comes in, by adding a blue tone. For the stone walls, I don't want to contrast too much with the rest, so I will make it quite desaturated. Only the glass panels will strike a strong contrast. For the painting process, I started with the flats. I separated each area on different layers. Because I couldn't be bothered to add yet another layer, I decided to put the telescopes on the same layer as the glass of the windows. Since on the canvas the telescopes are on their own, a bit far away from the windows, I won't accidentally shade one and affect the other. The way I shaded the academy, strangely enough, was the same way I'm used to shading characters and portraits. From the base color, I picked a darker, warmer tone and applied it with a soft brush and low opacity. It makes the walls, for example, go from cream to orange, then red, and finally another pass with the soft purple tone. After I was done with the darker part of the shading, I moved on to the lighter part, going more into yellow territory. The choice of shading color wasn't random. I wanted either early morning light or late evening. This is why I used the perspective point to make the rays almost horizontal, as the sun is close to the horizon. Using this approach of base color, then darker and darker, then lighter and lighter, I painted the walls, the roofs, and basically everything. I used the same method everywhere, simply changing the colors a bit depending on the surface. Since the roofs were already red to begin with, I went a bit darker with them. The base red is darker than the base cream, so the part of the roof where the sun touches directly will go towards more orange rather than yellow. I don't know if it makes sense as I explain it, it's kinda hard to put color theory into words. The takeaway point is that I used the same process over and over. It was rather straightforward and efficient as it only took me about an hour to paint the entire thing. A bit more than that when you take into account the flats earlier where I had to make sure not to color outside the lines. Had I stuck to my original plan, it would have taken a lot longer. Let me explain. At first I wanted to detail the whole thing like crazy. I wanted to make roof tiles, etc. But as I was painting it, I realized that from far away, like when the canvas fills the screen without zooming in, you can't really see details if they were there. As it is, just with the shapes and the perspective, the drawing is already crowded enough. Even more so since it contrasts a lot with the intentional lack of background. I could have added a lot of details, but they would have made it unreadable. I think where I could have worked a bit more is on the golden spirals, for example on the side of the stairs below the main door. The golden pattern looks flat as heck. I would have shaded it better. The thing is, now that I look at it, I really wish I would make it less angular. Like the whole drawing. I could have tweaked the perspective grid so that the lines were slightly curved instead of straight. The perspective here is a bit intense. Sometimes something that makes sense physically looks less good than something unrealistic. I'm not talking about changing the perspective halfway through, but simply rounding some of the shapes here. Make it less angular. So next time I make a drawing of a building with a strong perspective, I will take a closer look at the shape language and the entire silhouette. If I were to redraw the same artwork, which I obviously don't want to do, I would make it rounder. So basically, it's my excuse for not pushing detailed work on stuff like the golden spirals. I would have drawn the details, but it doesn't matter for this suboptimal rendition of the artwork. In any case, I'm still really proud of this painting. I'm not making a critique because I crave your compliments, I do it because it's important to reflect back on what you did and take notes of areas you can improve in. If I can indulge in self-praise for a moment, I think the light work and the coloring is bang on and looks really good. 
The idea itself is also really cool. Having a perspective building with an observatory tower in the middle is a good one in my opinion. It makes for an interesting design element. I hope you learned a thing or two while watching me draw, but more importantly, I hope you had a good time. I would ask you to like, comment and subscribe, but I hear it doesn't really work, so instead, please consider sharing this video. Maybe show my work to a friend of yours, or your dad, or your neighbor. I put a lot of hours into making content, so it always makes me happy when people discover it and continue to watch. Let's learn art stuff together, alright? I'm Detroit and I'm kissing your forehead gently. Bye!